Risk Five International Series, Risk Five in Five, where we cover a topic in about five minutes. I'm Greg Sterling, and today I want to talk about using the micro SD card that we etched Fedora F41 onto so that we can get it set up on the DC Romo laptop too. Now, what you're going to want to do first is flip over your laptop, and you're going to see up in the top corner here, right there, we've got an, a micro SD card slot. I'm just going to put this in. Make sure you put it in straight because if you get it at an angle, it can get stuck inside of the case instead of going in. But you should just get it pushed in. And once you get it all the way in, you'll hear it click and you'll know that it's secure in your laptop. With that, we can open it up and get ready to uh, boot up. And I'm just going to plug this in here so we get an external HDMI display and some power. So with that, with everything set up and configured, I'm just going to hit the power button and we're going to start booting. You can see as we get the system booting up, we get the DC Roma logo and then we'll get the Fedora logo here as well. And this is just letting us know that we're booting up into Fedora. A nice thing about the laptops from DC Roma for the DC Roma laptop 2, it will boot off of the SD card by default so that if you put in a micro SD card, it will choose to boot off of that instead of the internal drive. And here you can see we're, we're now into the UI booting up for Fedora. So we're, everything's working great. We have the system coming up. We're going to be able to use it and start getting it configured in a moment. With that, I'm going to click next and we are all done and can start using Fedora. You can see here, we now have a little welcome message for using Fedora 41. I'm going to click skip, but if you would like to take the tour, it does a pretty good job of explaining where, how to navigate through Fedora to continue using it and getting things set up. So I'm going to click skip. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the, the dash up on the top left. We're going to then click on show apps and we're going to want to click on terminal and with terminal open we're going to have a few commands we want to run first up though i'm going to make the screen a little bit bigger just by clicking the little three dashes in a row and clicking on the plus sign now a couple of things we can do is first we can just do if config and this will give us our ip address if you look at the WL line, we can see INET is 192.168.43.133. That's my local IP address, and it's what I will use to connect to the system. But we still need to actually install SSHD so that we can get this set up and running as an SSH server. So I'm going to do sudo dnf install SSHD and hit return. It's going to ask me for my password. I'm going to put that in. And once that's done, it's going to go out and connect to a server and it will then download the SSHD package and install it so that we can then remote in from a different system. And here we can see we're connecting to several different repositories as it's looking for this package. I'm going to come in and accept this package. So we're going to say yes. This is going to go get the open SSH server, which will allow us to remote in. With the SSH server installed, we just need to run a couple more commands. So I'm going to go sudo systemctl enable sshd. This is going to enable it on the system and allow it to actually run. And then next I'm going to do system sudo systemctl start, not stat, start sshd. This will start the service so that we can remote into it. And just to verify that it's working, I am going to switch to a different system. I've now switched over to my local desktop. And what I'm going to do here is a SSH to Greg Starling, which is my user account at 192.168.43.133. That's my local IP address for the system. Hit return. And it's going to ask me if I trust the system or not. I happen to be sitting right in front of it. So it's easy for me to say yes. Um, so I will trust it. It's going to add that information to my local host. And then I'm just going to type in my IP address. 
And with that, I am actually connected into this Fedora system. I can do an LS, I can see what the files are, and I can work from this system remotely. Thank you.